Hello, my name is Steve Miller. I'm a math professor at Williams College, and this is the next of the coronavirus lecture series with many thanks to the Journal of Number Theory and the Teachers of Scholars program. So today is May the 4th, so it is Star Wars Day, and in honor of Star Wars, and because I am a father, we'll talk about the father seen most often in the series, Darth Vader. Now, why are we doing this with probabilities? Well, the image down here is the Millennium Falcon of his future son-in-law, sorry, I said, spoiler alert, uh, Han Solo, and we were told that the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid belt is approximately 3,721. It would take too long to show why that is a correct calculation, so instead I am going to do the Captain Nita problem. So you might remember Captain Nita. He's one of the many officers who failed Darth Vader, and what happens when you fail Darth Vader? You don't get a second chance. You really don't get a second chance, okay? So Darth Vader is not the most forgiving of persons, okay? So it would be useful to know the geometric series formula, which we will review quickly. Uh, that was given in an earlier lecture. Assume some algebra one. And it basically says, if the absolute value of r is less than one, then there's some one plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth, and so on and so on and so on. That infinite sum is r over one minus r. And we will use this to analyze how long we expect Darth Vader's lieutenants to live, given their various rates of success. If you are successful, do you think you'll live longer with Darth Vader? If you do, yes. And if you fail more frequently, you expect you will die faster. Well, you only get to fail once. You only get to fail once. <laughs> so the question is, if you fail. Yes. Well, if you feel frequently. If you, well, you won't feel frequently. You will feel it most ones. So we're going to try to analyze how long people who serve Darth Vader live. And so I mentioned the geometric series formula. So there's many different ways to prove it. In that lecture, we actually gave two proofs. I'm going to review one of the proofs now. The other one is a nice basketball problem, which illustrates a wonderful concept of memoryless processes. And it's important to look, whenever you use a formula, what are the assumptions? We're assuming r is less than one. If r was two, what would r squared be? Four. And r cubed? Eight. And r to the fourth? Six. Yeah, and there's no way that that sum should converge. So it's reasonable that we need r to be less than one for there to be a chance for the series to converge, otherwise the terms just get larger and larger and larger. And it turns out that that is all that we need. So by converging, we mean that it's going to approach this number here, one over one minus r. So if r equals one half, what's one minus a half? No, one minus a half is a half. as a half, and one over a half is just two. So let's show that this is reasonable. So if we take r equals a half, as we mentioned, we have one plus a half plus a fourth plus an eighth, and that should equal two. So imagine we have a walker, and you can view this as each moment in time, he walks half the distance from where he is to two. So his first step, he covers one unit, he's halfway there. The next step, he covers half a unit, and he's now here. The oh, next, so yeah, we saw this before. The next step, he covers an eight, a, uh, eighth of a unit, and now he's at one and seven eighths, and so on and so on and so on. So we're gonna just quickly review the proof. So let's let Sn be the sum all the way up to Rn. If we multiply by R, then the one becomes an r, the r becomes an r squared, the r squared becomes an r cubed, the r to the n becomes an r to the n plus one. What should we do now? Look at all these terms that are the same. Subtract. Yeah, if we subtract, we get sn minus r times sn is one. So let's just have the top r to the n plus one. So you get factoring out, because both things here have an sn, you get one minus r times sn is one minus r to the n plus one, so Sn is equal to just divide. And now, because r is less than one in absolute value, what happens to r to the n plus one is you take high and higher powers of a number that's less than one? What does it go to? So you had like a half, a fourth, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, a sixty-fourth. What's that going to? An infinity. Not infinity. Yeah. One half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth. What are these fractions approaching? Two. Yeah, they're positive two, but what are they approaching? What number? Zero. Yeah, they're approaching zero. What if I did threes? One third, one ninth, one twenty seventh, one eighty first. What's that approaching? Zero. 
So they'll all go to zero. So the infinite sum is just one over one minus r. So we now have this as a nice formula. If r is less than one, this infinite sum goes to one over one minus r. All right, so now here's the Darth Vader problem. We find out in Return of the Jedi that Darth Vader says the emperor is not as forgiving as I am, which makes you wonder, does he just kill people before they even have a chance to fail him? Because Darth Vader doesn't really get that many uh, rewards for creating a positive work environment. Well, um, I think he may be, if he's trying to cover up how bad he is. Maybe. I don't really get how the emperor is Could be less forgiving, <laughs> right. What do you do, just kill everybody I, I think, who comes after so. you? I think so. So what we're going to do is we're going to analyze. That would include Darth Vader, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> Darth Vader, I guess, is allowed a little bit of leeway. So if your probability of failing Darth Vader on a task is P, so P is the probability you fail, how many tasks until you die? Well, let's look at it. How many tasks? So you could be very unlucky and you might fail on the first task and die. But maybe you were a little bit lucky and maybe you never fail and you live a long, long time. So here's a bunch of questions and I'm gonna pause the video in a moment so you can answer. If the probability you fail a task is P, what's the probability you don't fail a task? So if you fail one fourth of the time, how often do you succeed? Q. What, what would that Q be in oh, terms of P? Three fourths. Three fourths. If you fail one fifth of the time, what's the probability you succeed? Four fifths. And if you fail P times, what's the probability you succeed? Mm. One, minus. one minus P. So the first question is, what's the probability you fail on the first task? What's the probability your first failure is on the second task? So you succeed and then fail. What's the probability your first failure is on the third task? So succeed, succeed, and then fail. And more generally, what's the probability your first failure is on the nth task? So we'll pause. Okay, welcome back. So the answer is the probability you fail on your first task, well, that's what we've defined P to be, so it's P. To fail for the first time on the second task, you succeed, which is one minus P, times P for fail. For your first failure to be on the third task, it should be one minus P times P squared. And finally, the probability that your first failure is on the nth task is you have n minus one successes and then a failure. Now, if you notice very carefully, this was originally an n, not an n minus one. There was a typo. Fortunately, it seems like I am not giving this talk to Darth Vader, and I was able to either survive or fix the mistake fast enough that he doesn't count it as a failure on my part. Well, he could be watching this later. Little later. And then um, he'll just come find you. It could be. So now I want to introduce a new concept in probability that we haven't done before, but it's very valuable. It's called the expected value. And so the definition is going to look a lot, it's going to look very unwieldy at first. So the expected value is the sum of the product of each value it takes on. Oh, that should be fixed. Yeah. And I'm sorry, that should be an n minus one. I forgot to fix that one. Times the probability it takes on that value. So it's the sum of the product of each value it takes on times the probability it takes on the value. So the, the length of tasks, the number of tasks we could do, it could be one, and then we multiply by the probability that the first failure is at one. Or it could be two, and we multiply by the probability that the first failure is two. Or it could be three, and we multiply by the probability that the first failure is three. So if we add this all up, this will give us the expected number of tasks we expect to complete until we die. Okay, and so, doing it a little bit more carefully, we know what these probabilities are. So the probability we feel on the first task is P, which is one times P. And we have two times one minus P times P. That's the probability the first failure is on the second task. Three times one minus P squared times P. That's the probability the first failure is on the third task. Oh, look, third task, three. Second task, two. First task, one. And notice the power of one minus P is one less than the task. Task two the first power, three tasks to the second power, n tasks to the n minus first power. So we want to figure out what this sum is. So I just pulled out a p because every term is being multiplied by p, so let's pull it out, and we have this infinite sum. Unfortunately, this sum is a bit hard to evaluate. Normally, I would evaluate it by using some tricks involving calculus and differentiating identities, but this is not a calculus talk, so we will find a way to do this using only algebra. Before we try to do this, 
whenever you have an expression in math, it's good to try to find a lower bound or an upper bound. You know what a lower bound is? Like an under? Yeah, uh, yeah. Or it could actually be correct. It's either correct or an underestimate. It will be at least. Bound would be correct or an overestimate. Uh, correct or an overestimate. So let's find an underestimate. So I'm going to do something very natural. I'm going to replace this two with a one, this three with a one, this four with a one. And now we just have a geometric series. And we know how to evaluate the geometric series. So what's the common ratio? It's supposed to be one plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. So what is r equal here? One minus p. One minus p. So we use the geometric series formula with one minus p. So we get p, and then the geometric series is one over r, so we get one minus one minus p. What's one minus one minus p? So what would that be? So let's think about it. So what is one minus one minus p? It'd be p. What's p divided by p? It's just one. So we get the lower bound is one. Wow. This tells you that you know, Darth Vader kills you after your first failure. You will do at least one task for Darth Vader. Is that a useful lower bound? No. And in fact, notice that the lower bound doesn't depend on p at all. It's a very stupid lower bound. It basically means he's more forgiving than the emperor, who might kill you after no tasks. But it's a pretty useless lower bound. Let's try to get an upper bound. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace 2 with 2. OK, no change. I'm going to replace 3 with 2 squared. I'm going to replace 4 with 2 cubed. I'm going to replace 5 with 2 to the 4. So making all the numbers either the same or larger. Two, two, whatever. Yeah. Replace yeah. So doesn't this look like a geometric series now? Yeah. So what would be the ratio now? Before the ratio was one minus p. What's the ratio now? Yes, yeah, say it, say it. Two times one minus p. But we have to be careful. So it does look like it's a geometric series formula with ratio two times one minus p. But remember, we need two times one minus p to be less than one if we're going to use the geometric series formula. So that means we need one minus p to be less than a half. Or that's the same as p is greater than a half. No, it would blow because then you just get one plus one plus one plus one. So we get an upper bound of p divided by one minus two, one minus p. And so for example, if you take p equals three quarters, well, if your probability of failing is three fourths, your probability of succeeding one minus p is just one quarter. So that's less than a half, so you're fine. It gives you an expected life of, at most, one and a half tasks. So Wait, how do you get half a task? Well, because you say if you do this many, many times with people who have a success, or have a failure rate of 75%, you would expect, um, I'm sorry, all of them would have an expected life of, at most, 1.5. Now, somebody might get very, very lucky and they might get success, 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 fail, but you would be surprised. That would be a rare event. So let's plot. So the actual answer, uh, we will see what it is later. We will actually prove what the actual answer is. And this over here is the upper bound, and the upper bound depends on P. This is the lower bound, and you can see that as the failure rate gets pretty high, around 90% failure rate, the upper bound is actually quite close to the truth. So for high values of failure, for really incompetent workers, Darth Vader's formula is actually not bad. The upper bound formula is not bad. But for lower values, it doesn't do a great job. So we're going to use calculus later, and we're going to show that the correct answer for how long you expect to live is 1 over p. So if your probability of failing is a half, then you would expect to do two tasks before you die. If your probability of failure is 1 quarter, which means you're pretty successful, you would expect to live through four tasks. So I want you to look at extreme cases and see if this formula is reasonable. This is something you should always do, is look at extreme cases and try to get a sense. So the most extreme values for the probability is zero, in which case you never fail, or one, in which case you are a complete failure. And so I'm gonna pause and let you figure out what would you expect the life expectancy to be. All right, so we talked about this. If as p goes to one, that means your probability of failure is getting very, very high. In fact, you're a complete failure when p equals one. You can't do anything right, 
and you will only survive for one task because Darth Vader will kill you. As P goes to zero, however, you become more and more competent. So you might join the Rebel Alliance. And so as that happens, the number of tasks you go can complete will go up to. Right, so my assistant said, you know, let's share a little bit of a calculation. So just very quickly, you know, imagine we had one divided by two thirteenths. So we had the formula is one over P. So this is the case when P equals two thirteenths. We want to calculate, well, what would this be? When you have a fraction like this, one way you deal with it is you multiply by one. Because if you multiply by one, you haven't done anything. So multiply by 13 over two and 13 over two. And what's nice now is the bottom is two 13s times 13 halves. That's just one. And the top is just now going to be 13 halves. And so the answer is just going to be 13 halves. or 6.5, so it's the reciprocal of the fraction down below. All right, so to finish up the lecture, come back here. And so what I want to do now is I want to try to talk about how we would actually prove this formula without using calculus. What we're going to do is we're going to use one of the main perspectives of mathematicians. Mathematicians are lazy. We try to reduce things to things we already know. We, we know, also try to do nothing. We also try to do nothing, which is like adding zero multiplied by one. So we're going to let q equal one minus p. So the formula is now p times one plus two q plus three q, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we want to evaluate this. If we didn't have these two, three, fours, there'd be a geometric series and we'd be done. But we don't. But here's what we do that's clever. We can write q, two q as q plus q, right? We can write three q squared as q squared plus q squared plus q squared and so on and so on and so on. Wait, you're not going to? I'm not going to, yes. So notice what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is everything has a P, and we're going to just take one from each of these and put this here. So this is Q, Q squared, Q cubed. Now for the second one, see how we had two Qs? We start the next sum at Q plus Q squared plus Q cubed and so on. And now look, we're going to get P times one is that's our P term, P times Q, plus p times q is our 2pq term. Now for the 3q squared term, how many sums is this going to be? And it's going to be in three. It's going to be in this sum, it's going to be in the sum that starts with q, and the sum that starts with q squared. The 4q cubed term, how many sums will that be in? It'll be in four. It'll be in the sum starting with one, q, q squared, and q cubed. <gasps> Doesn't this look like a geometric series? What's the ratio? 1 plus q plus q squared plus q cubed, the ratio is just, is just q. So they all have the same ratio q. The difference is they have different starting terms. This starts at 1, this starts at q, this starts at q squared. So let's just pull out the q's. So the first one, we don't pull out anything. The second, we pull out a q. The next one, we pull out a q squared. And now these are all the same. And each one of these is just 1 over q by the geometric series formula. So we get p times 1 over 1 minus q. We have pq times 1 mi over 1 minus q. We have pq squared times 1 over 1 minus q. What should we pull out from all of these? We have a p, 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 p. And then we would be left with 1 plus q plus q squared plus q cubed. That's another geometric series formula. And we use that as that's 1 over 1 minus q. So we get p times one over one minus q, times one over one minus q. One minus q is just, I'm sorry, q is one minus p, so p is one minus q. We have p divided by p, which is one over p, and we prove the formula without using calculus that if you feel Darth Vader with probability p, the number of tasks until you die and you did not is one over p. We did not feel. We succeeded. We hope you enjoyed this lecture and succeeded making it to the end. Have a great day. May the force be with you.